Hey, figure one, what do you see right now? I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table, a drying rack with cups and a plate, and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Humanoid robots are having a moment. A decade or two ago, it was a struggle to get robots to walk, not to mention respond to spoken requests. Now, armed with advancements in artificial intelligence, a gaggle of companies are at work on these bipedal creations. Serial entrepreneur Brett Adcock founded robot maker figure less than two years ago and has lured some of the biggest names in tech and AI as investors. Adcock is riding high on the progress that his 23-month-old robot startup has made so far, working out of converted warehouse offices in Sunnyvale, California. He took an indirect path to his current ultra-competitive pursuit. He grew up on a soybean farm in Moequa, Illinois, run by his parents before graduating from University of Florida with a business degree in 2008. After he graduated from university, he worked on Wall Street and then founded two other startups. By August 2022, Adcock had eight employees. Now it's up to 80 and growing, with employees joining from some of the top tech companies. There are no commercially viable humanoid companies today that are in market making money so I would say, you know, at the surface level, we, we, have, we have to introduce a product in the market that's never been done before. And it, it's just a huge technical fee. It's a huge integration burden. Um, it's a safety burden, it's a cost area, a focus. It, it's just extremely difficult thing to challenging business to, to be building. Uh, along the way, we've had to go build a team from scratch. Uh, I probably spent the first year in a really cramped phone booth calling everybody in the world, trying to convince them to come over here. Uh, it's always hard hire, trying to hire great people. I feel very confident and fortunate that we have like some of the best engineers in the world here today. It was very obvious even when I first met him, he moves fast. He is an organizer and is able to sort of collect incredible people and organize those teams. And he's highly commercial. And so he sees what needs to be done to truly bring these technologies to market. In the past, robots have taken years to design and build, but Figure is all about speed. At Figure, we believe getting to market faster is super healthy. From an engineering perspective, we have like an, basically an iterative design approach uh, to engineering, which means we spend like less time on like, research and development and analyzing things. We spend more time on just building and testing products. Very quickly became obvious to us that this was like backing Ford in 1903, where it's very rare to have a new technology that has no incumbents and is unregulated. And the, and the reality is, 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 if this technology works, everything changes. Artificial intelligence will be the backbone to basically everything we do that will help control the robot, to help observe the physical world, plan actions, uh, do prediction. In March 2024, Figure publicly released a video demonstrating its Figure One robot. Based on the scene right now, where do you think the dishes in front of you go next? The dishes on the table, like that plate and cup, are likely to go into the drying rack next. Great, can you put them there? Of course. At a high level, the robot has so many different ways it can move. Right. Sitting there and writing code for every single thing it needs to do, like make coffee or do right. work in manufacturing. That would take forever, right? Forever. It's yeah. impossible yeah. Yeah. to do. So we need a better way of doing that. We think that way is through uh, AI training. So we have a whole AI team that works on how we train the robot to do useful work all day long uh, in, these, in these instruction environments. Mm -hmm. Figure has a 3D printer on site, and it makes things like printed circuit boards and improvements to the motors called actuators. Here we are designing uh, new generations of electric motors. Uh, these motors are used uh, all throughout the robot to mm -hmm. make it move around. Uh, there's, there's an electric motor in here, very similar to what you'd have in an electric car. Mm -hmm. And then we have extra sensors and other things in here that you might not see uh, that we also design here in-house. Naturally, I think a lot of people are still hesitant about the evolution of robots especially humanoids. The interesting thing here is our robot looks like a human, so yeah. we can gather, gather human-like data for humans doing demonstrations of things. 
And if we can train our robot to do it, that's like the holy grail right. for us. Robots interacting with humans is like a fundamental to our business. Like if we can't have robots interacting with humans every single day, there, it's, it's gonna be very limiting for a humanoid. We really need uh, them to be able to talk to the robots as probably, probably the main default user interface. We need to be able to interact next to them safely. We need to have the robots also safely integrated into a home so we don't want them falling over, damaging things, hurting people. So safety is like core to our mission of being able to work next to humans every single day. And of course, there's a fear that robots will take jobs away from humans. It's very easy to run into concerns around a dystopian future of what a humanoid will be. But again, after our work, it just became obvious of how large the need is for these with the labor gap that's happening, not just in the U.S., but globally, where there's a few million jobs that humans don't want or they're not showing up to day to day. And it's very low hanging fruit to have a couple million of these robots out there doing jobs that we don't want to do. If you walk into like a manufacturing or warehouse plant today, they're losing 50 to 150% turnover every single year. People just don't want to do these jobs where they walk 10 miles a day or they grab 50 items an hour or it's their next to things that are, you know, getting spot welded and it's very unsafe. And we have 10 million jobs that are open in the U.S. and nobody wants. And we also have a collapse in the amount of workers in the workforce. So there's this huge labor crisis that's going on that's really not well reported. And we want to go and help solve that. So I think it's going to be quite a long time before we're ever really taking people's jobs in a significant way. I think what we're really seeing is a labor crisis that we can go in and help, uh, help basically help with that void. Robot workers may soon become a reality. Companies like BMW are exploring the possibility of putting figures robots into their factory line. We've chosen to work with groups like BMW that are aligned with us on getting robots into market quicker and then scaling out as fast as we can. We hope to launch over the next 12 to 24 months in Spartanburg, South Carolina, which is their largest uh, plant globally in terms of production volume. A lot of the work we're doing with them is revolved around work in the body shop with manufacturing, moving sheet metal, work in the warehouse logistics, moving bins and boxes and other type of tasks. There's thousands of those type of uh, tasks that need to be automated at those facilities. We hope over the next 12 to 24 months, we're starting to have real robots in real facilities uh, at our clients. This is one of these areas where like a lot of the folks here, myself, we've been dreaming about this for a long time, since I was a kid. Having a chance to come in here every day and work on a humanoid robot and actually integrate into the real world is, we're just like, super fortunate to be here and we're working as hard as possible. A lot has to happen before humanoid robots are an everyday thing at even factories around the country. One of them is figuring out the power issue. Figures lithium ion batteries are last just two hours right now. And right now their version of the robot still has a black cord dragging behind it that connects to a computer. The next version of this robot will carry its own computer and be cordless, I'm told. Can robots learn everything they need to do? That may take some time. I think once we start seeing robots in the real world, doing everyday tasks, helping humans, doing real work every single day, it'll feel like 30 years of the future, 50 years of the future is pulled forward. It'll be pretty magical.